Hello to members of the 100 and potential members of the 100. I want to remind you and point you towards some of the projects that have uh, come under our umbrella of activities because you may or may not be aware of them, but uh, when I started listing them, I thought oh, this is quite the curriculum change from what we used to do in our school. Of course, this doesn't uh, take away from the training, the physical training itself, which has to be superb and intense. But this is the philosophical slant. This is the out of the dojo and into the world aspect of it. So let's begin. We started an environmental self-defense program. It's primarily headed by several members who have embraced the idea, chiefly among them Mike and Karen Valentine of uh, San Rafael, California. And they adopted uh, the first ever uh, environmental cleanup project for a black belt test uh, in a school, you know, outside of the ultimate black belt test, and they started the first green team, which is the team of green belts who do environmental projects in the community. And this year we're going to be working with Julia Butterfly Hill on developing some curriculum and some educational components for both instructors and students. Uh, we have a new dietary self-defense program. Now, we've addressed dietary self-defense in the past, but we now have a black belt, uh, Mike Tubbs, who is also a professional nutritionist who has started to tackle uh, pulling all the resources together that we need to have some really solid comprehensive training for instructors, for school owners, for instructors, and something we can pass along to students. We're not going to actually tell people how to eat. We're going to teach about healthy eating and things to avoid. And actually, we're going to do anything within our power to press that idea forward because it's sound. And there's a lot more... Uh, relevance to diet and self-defense than there is to the block and self-defense. We have a diabetes education program thanks to Andy Mandel and Don Swidorsky. Diabetes education means that you can take a subject like diabetes, go through uh, the training program at DefeatDiabetes.org online, uh, commune with Andy and Don, and then Go out into your community for self-defense from a diabetes perspective because we all have heard that one in three children born after the year 2000 will be affected di by diabetes. Now this makes it a self-defense issue. We get to talk about self-defense from a very culturally relevant place. And, you know, you don't want to see your kids or anybody else's kids get diabetes if they don't have to. The first ever anger management training program for martial arts teachers. Now it's two 10-hour courses. You get certified as an anger management uh, educator. It's with one of the preeminent anger management coaches in the world, Dr. Tony Fiore. A small handful of you have taken it. Your staff should be taking this course. The money is very well spent. And because you want to be able to represent uh, anger management training in an intelligent and well-educated fashion in your community, so that even the doctors, even the psychologists, steer kids towards you. And it's not trouble kids. It's catching kids long before it ever becomes an issue in their life. It's preventive work. It's self-defense. Uh, we conceived and dominate the Acts of Kindness program in the martial arts community. I conceived the idea. Brian Williams has started thinkkindness.org, and he's doing more work on your behalf than you can possibly imagine if you have not investigated it. And uh, I think you'd be a fool not to, uh, to go and see what he's doing and to network with him and to even bring him out to your school. It's too good of a program. He's too first class of an operator not to pay attention to. About a year ago, we started working with uh, a scientist researcher from the Algelita Research Project, uh, Joel Paschal. And while not very many instructors have done much about it, I think it's a huge tool for you in your community. You just have to develop it. You have to get to own it. It's ocean plastic pollution. It's everywhere. Every, everywhere we turn, there are bottles of plastic. It gives you a chance to talk about something very important to the world. And when you see the videos and what's going on in the ocean, you'll be shocked. Of course, we have a new launch on our bullying program, and here, you know, shame on us for not having this program up and running and working a decade ago. 
but it's not too late. It's time to work on this. And I don't mean one of these superficial put up posters say you teach bullying. I mean going out and getting an education and training your staff and students and then, and then attacking the subject with vigor. We have formed a union with the PACER Center, pacercenter.org, and uh, we are going to be tackling bullying in the biggest and most proactive way, and we're going to eliminate it from society. We started and launched and conceived project-based leadership training. Now, this is where you build a project portfolio of what your students accomplish in the community. I know a lot of you have heard about this. Uh, not very many of you have uh, done the homework and the work. And if you don't do the work, you don't reap the benefit from it. So you can't give it one of these superficial treatments. you got to get into it. Gary Engels is the head of project-based leadership training. If you haven't already you know, done the Vulcan mind meld with him, you're making a big mistake. That's a very important project. About a year ago, too, we started working with uh, and talking to the author of Last Child in the Woods. Now, this is the fellow who coined the phrase Major Deficit Disorder. And so uh, not many of you have done much with it, but we're moving in that direction. This is a book you should read because there are new students to be found through this material. And more importantly than new students, there are kids that w could change their life if you introduced them to these ideas and facilitated it in your community. We have uh, another book we're working with, Savor. You know, right now we have a Savor recipe contest. And if you participate, you'll help give me the muscle to uh, make an impression uh, on authors that we can capitalize down the road. If you do nothing and don't participate and don't promote it among your students, then, uh, you know, we kind of fizzle out. And next time we go to an author, you know, we can make promises again. We have to turn these promises into action. Savorthebook.com. It's part of our Dietary Self-Defense Program. It's a book written by Zen Master Thich Nhat Hanh and uh, Harvard Professor Lillian Chung. We also uh, started to form a collaboration and actually did some work on behalf of uh, the author, uh, Mel Bartholomew, of Square Foot Gardening. Now, Square Foot Gardening, if you didn't know, was the best-selling book series of all time and creation in the gardening world. And, uh, he has more resources on his site than you can shake a, you know, a uh, tomato plant at. And uh, you have a chance to get involved with him because the square foot gardening concept is something very manageable. It's very organic. It's very, you know, getting kids to know where their food comes from. It's about dietary self-defense again, but it's a project, a square foot garden. It's, so it's something you can sponsor in a school, go in and build, very inexpensively and come back and maintain and have an ongoing dialogue. You're doing something for the school. These are some of the projects uh, that are just the beginning of the work we do in the 100. We are headed in an entirely new direction in the martial arts community. This is for uh, the educated, motivated, uh, inspired master instructor or master instructor in training. Uh, for more information on this association, go to the newwaynetwork.com or call me. I'm Tom Callis at 530-903-0286.